Welcome to the video lesson for solving equations with square root terms or solving radical equations. Solving a radical equation is just solving an equation that has a square root term. It's kind of like looking at the function y equals 2 root x minus 1 and asking where that function is equal to 5. Or algebraically, we're looking for the x or x values that makes this expression true. And the way to solve if it's not immediately obvious, if you can't just figure it out by looking, the way to solve this algebraically is to isolate the term containing the radical. So I want to get this radical by itself. It could have a coefficient. Um, in this case, actually, I'll, I'll get rid of the coefficient because it's easier to do so. But if you kept it, that would not be terrible. So I move this negative 1 to the other side. I can divide both sides by 2. And once I've got this, I'll square each side, meaning I want to square to get rid of that radical, because when I square this, this square and the square root cancel. I'm left with x on one side, and on the other side, I've got 9. And it's important to verify your answers, because in square root functions, there are often solutions that don't work. So we have to verify that this one does work, and when I plug it back into the original, root 9 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5, it's true, it works, which means that the answer here is 9. In example 2, I've got two terms under the radical, but it's the same idea. I want to isolate the radical, square both sides. When I do this entire square root and the squared cancel, I'll isolate the a completely. I've got an answer a is 1. And verify means that I plug it back into the very original, very first term or very first expression. And when I plug that in, I get root 4, which is 2, plus 4 is 6. It's not equal to 2. That's false. And so there is no answer to this equation. In example 3, I have another radical term, which I want to isolate. And here I have an x term on the other side. I'll start off the same way, isolating the radical. I'll square both sides. But remember that this square root and this squared will cancel. But on this side, this x plus 1 squared means x plus 1 times x plus 1. I have to double distribute. Or the shortcut is that I'll get this term squared plus 2 times the product of these two terms plus this term squared. Uh, dealing with a quadratic now, because I have x squared terms, what I would normally want to do is bring everything to one side so that I could factor it and have it equal to zero. But in this case, the x squared terms happen to cancel out. So when I isolate, I'll just get 2x on one side and bring this over. I'd get 10 on the other. And that means that x is 5. And again, I'll have to verify when I plug that in. 5 squared plus 11 under the radical is root 36, which is 6. And the x that I plugged in on this side is just 5. 5 is equal to 5. It's true. So the answer here is x is equal to 5. In a case that you have two radicals in the same equation, what you want to do is move them to opposite sides of the equation. Ideally, you'd want to isolate one of them. It doesn't really matter. And then square both sides. So I brought this to the other side. And now I squared both sides. When I do on this side, the root and the squared cancel. But on this side, I'm again foiling. I have to double distribute. It's like I'm doing 1 plus root x minus 5 times 1 plus root x minus 5. And on this side, I'll get x. Here, I'll get 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 times x minus 5 in the root. So I'm still going to have a radical. plus root x minus 5 all squared, which is just going to be x minus 5. I still have this radical term. I can now isolate this remaining radical, and it's kind of like the steps that we did in the previous examples. So I bring this, this, and this all to the other side. I'm left with this radical term. I divided both sides by 2 because it divides nicely. And now I'll square both sides again. So when I square both sides here, I'll get 2 squared on one side. And on this side, my radical and my squared cancel. And I get x is 9. When I verify that, plug it back in, 
I get something that does work, it's true, so my solution is just x is 9. So again, another example where I have two radicals. I'll bring them to opposite sides of the equation, square both sides. Uh, there should be a squared here, sorry about that. When I square both sides, here the radical and the square cancel out. Here I get 2 squared plus 2 times the product of these two terms, so I have a radical, plus this term squared. I'll isolate this radical. I want to get it completely by itself. So I moved everything to the other side except for this radical. I could have divided by 4, but actually in this case it just makes the numbers a little bit less nice. So I'll square like this. This one is again a double distribution. It'll be x squared minus 2 times x times 2, 2 times the product of the middle term, two terms, plus this term squared. And here when I square, this radical and this squared cancel out, but I also have to square this coefficient. So I get 16 times x plus 3. I distributed that 16. And now that I have a quadratic where an x squared term does not cancel, I'll bring all the terms to one side. So I'll subtract 16x over here. I'll subtract 48 over here and have it equal to 0. And then this turns out to be factorable, which means my two x's are x could be 22 or x could be negative 2. And I've got to verify them both. Plugging 22 in works. That's an answer. Plugging negative 2 in does not work. So there's only one answer. It's 22. The answer that doesn't work is called an extraneous root. It's a specific mathematical term, and uh, it also makes you sound smart if you use it. And so the solution is 22. And that is it.